Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be talking about a SPOM, and a SPOM is a self powered oxygen machine. If you guys didn't know, the SPOM is one of the designs that is the first intricate system that a lot of new players strive to make. As the name implies, it's a setup with certain buildings so that you produce oxygen and also power itself. Usually, the SPOM consists of an electrolyzer as this produces hydrogen, and that's also connected to a hydrogen generator, which powers up the system. Now in our case, our SPOM system is as shown. This box, the two generators right here, and we also power in a water sieve to purify the polluted water. And we also power the liquid pump right here to pump up said polluted water. So all that combined is about 1580 watts of power, and our two hydrogen generators provide 1600 watts. Now, before we get started about the design, we're going to talk about the electrolyzer building of itself. The electrolyzer, as you guys could see right here, requires a water source. It consumes 1000 grams of water per second when on and produces 888 grams of oxygen and 112 grams of hydrogen. So you convert 1000 grams of liquid into 1000 grams of gas albeit you get two different elements now the caveat with this is that if you hover over the oxygen it will be at least 70 degrees or hotter depending on if the input materials so the temperature of the liquid if it's hotter than 70 the oxygen is going to be hotter than 70. but if you put in cold water anything less than 70 the oxygen will come out at 70 degrees so be warned you will have hot oxygen but this is the basis for the design. So let's talk about this really quick. We're producing a thousand grams per second of gas. And that comes from the electrolyzer building. Now, of course, the gas pump is only able to pump up 500 grams per second. That's actually the basis of our design right here. We have two pumps per electrolyzer, and that's how we're managing the system. Now, for the most part, that's the quick math. We generate a thousand grams and then we pump out a thousand grams, allowing us to constantly run and create oxygen. If you guys didn't know, you only need a hundred grams per second to keep a dupe alive and breathing as they consume oxygen at a rate of a hundred grams per second without any other modifiers like mouth breather or diver's lungs. So this one electrolyzer can easily provide enough oxygen for eight duplicates. So you might want to keep that in mind when designing your own electrolyzer spawn setup. Now, that being said, that's the buildings, how it works. And one last thing I want to get into is that the electrolyzer produces 112 grams of hydrogen and the generators only consume 100 grams per second. So you're technically overproducing slightly where we are actually not going to be able to consume all the hydrogen. And we'll talk about how to deal with that as well. So of course, let's talk about the spawn. So to get it started, our electrolyzers get fed in the water and then the gas system right here as we pump out the gases, you can see that we have hydrogen bubbles and oxygen bubbles. We have a mechanical filter right here. If you guys don't know about the mechanical filter, I'll leave a link in the description or in the comments down below and you guys can check that out. But with the mechanical filter, we're able to filter out all of the hydrogen gas, as you can see the uh, hydrogen magically disappears because of the filter design the oxygen passes through and the hydrogen appears back at the bottom so that's our mechanical filter design this is a powerless filter of course and it filters out our gases from the environment now after that's done we actually have our oxygen because it's coming around 67 degrees it's pretty hot we run that through a radiator box this radiator box is actually separate from the spawn design but in my spawn design, I'm utilizing the overflow of the hydrogen to power the aqua tutor. And we also have some hamster wheels if we do need a little bit extra juice. But that's how we're cooling down our oxygen right there. So we'll go into the radiator design in a little bit, but that's where the oxygen goes before it goes out into my Atmo suits and into my base to provide for the duplicates to breathe. And a couple other things we'll talk about is the automation at the bottom. My bottom sensors don't have a filter, 
but because of how the hydrogen is the lightest gas, it's never going to reach the bottom. And we guarantee that by not turning on the pumps unless the gas pressure is above a thousand grams. This means that these guys will not over pump because if they pump too much and create a vacuum, they could drag the hydrogen down vertically. So because of the atmosphere pressure being above a thousand, that usually guarantees that the hydrogen's up top. And by making it like that, we do not have to filter out the bottom lines. Now, of course, this system, if we have our lines back up, still operates as normal, as the only thing you need to worry about is the hydrogen line backing up. If your oxygen backs up, your pump stop pumping, that's perfectly okay. Nothing's going to go haywire. But if your hydrogen backs up, you're going to start seeing hydrogen appear in your oxygen lines. So with that, you're going to have to pay attention and make sure your hydrogen is being consumed. And we'll go into that right now. So as we pump out the hydrogen, it feeds into our generators. We have that pump into two gas reservoirs that feed into the generators. And these act as a buffer so that if anything happens, we'll have a little bit of extra hydrogen to keep the generators running for a little bit longer. And then once these fill up, it overflows to this, where we burn off the hydrogen. And what happens is, is that, well, this one isn't a burn off. This is actually what powers the aqua tuner. This is the actual burn off. And any hydrogen that goes out here just gets burned off so that we always have space for the hydrogen to come down. So sometimes if you don't want to waste or burn the extra hydrogen you guys could put that into a infinite gas pressure box if you guys want to stockpile the h2 but for me in my case i'm just burning it off and i'm not going to deal with that but this means so that my system is powering itself because we produce the hydrogen use the hydrogen to power the systems inside and it's enough power to cover everything so that's the spawn design in and of itself now we also have a radiator design that we're using to cool down the oxygen and that's what we have right here. We're using the no steel, no plastic early game aqua tuner setup. And I'll leave another link for that as well. Because we already did a video covering the mechanics on this and how this works. But basically we have the aqua tuner running the aqua tuner line through this liquid box. And by chilling the liquid inside to the temperature that we have on the sensor, which is 20 degrees bringing up the liquid overlay, the polluted water inside is around 20 degrees. And by having that be cool to 30 degrees, the gas is coming up, as you can see right here, 68 degrees, 50, 40, gets chilled very quickly. And that's because we're running the oxygen to a radiant piping that's also having radiant piping run on top of that, that's submerged in a cold liquid, and we also have temperature plates here 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 and here so basically this allows a lot of the temperature inside to even out nicely now you guys might be wondering does the oxygen heat up the liquid it does not and the reason why is because of volume the bubbles right here inside the pipeline is always going to be anywhere max a thousand grams minimum around 500 and that means that because it's going into a liquid environment right here, that's basically 45 tons of polluted water versus, you know, a thousand grams, you're not going to heat up the water. <laughs> it's going to take you a long time. So once you have your radiator box right here, chilled to the set temperature that you set with the thermal sensor, the oxygen coming out is literally just going to come out at the same temperature as your liquid. In my case, it's 20 degrees. You could play with that as uh, much as you want. And that's going to be how we create oxygen, cool it down, and then we distribute it. As you can see, it goes into my base. It goes into my Atmo suits. We have an overflow line for the outside sometimes. Now, before we get into anything, we actually have one thing. It's that... The electrolyzer, as I said, is pretty hot. 70 degrees oxygen, as you can see, 67 degrees in here. What we actually did was put two doors and the one right here is on automation on a signal switch. And that allows us to make a vacuum. That vacuum means that we have none of the heat inside leak out. As you can see, my water is still at 27 degrees right here. I just do this so that it's a perfect heat lock. And none of this leaks out even a little bit 
because once the spawn is built, you actually never have to go back inside. So by doing this and creating a vacuum lock, the heat leaks out very minimally through the insulated tiles. But, hope that helps. But guys, that has been the self-powered oxygen machine. If you guys have any questions about the design, leave a comment down below. Now for the most part, this is a simple design. Just wanted to have the spawn system kind of out there so you guys know how to make one. You guys could make or utilize some of the elements of the mechanics of certain things to your advantage and create your own design. Hope you guys share your ideas with us. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.